it is the middle of June and it is hot here in southeast Arkansas. Well, let's uh, stay inside and cool off and look a little bit at what's coming up this coming week. So remember, we're in the unit that's entitled, Why Are We Here? This is week four. The lesson title is, Why Did Jesus Come? It's out of Luke chapter 1, verses 68 through 79. And the point of the lesson is that Jesus came to remove our sin. So as I'm recording this on the afternoon of Tuesday, June 19th, uh, today is my birthday. Happy birthday to me. And uh, I won't tell you how old I am, but I will give you a hint. Uh, the Heinz steak sauce people have a, um, have a steak sauce with my number on it. So there you have it. All right. Hey, when, when we're presented with the title of this lesson, Why Did Jesus Come? Lots of responses. He came to die for our sins. He came to save us, came to restore that relationship with us and God. And he came to, to reconcile us to God. To, you know, all those answers, those are all correct. This lesson out of Luke chapter 1, it, it, it's the song of Zacharias, or Zechariah. And it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting place to, to find the answer to this, uh, to this question, but it's true. Now, honestly, as, as I look at this lesson, I've been studying it for a few days. It, it's, honestly, it, it's difficult for me. It's not as straightforward as, as many lessons might be that we've had in recent, in recent weeks. So I'm going to have to keep working on this. So if you have any additional insights or thoughts, I would appreciate your leaving those on my, uh, in, in the comments section under my video on the YouTube page. Well, first, I always think it's good to lay a little bit of groundwork and see, you know, why all this is happening. What's the last book of the Old Testament? Malachi. The last word of prophecy, about 400 B.C. So there's about a 400-year gap between uh, Malachi and the New Testament. Let's look at the last two verses of the book of Malachi. Uh, chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. It says this, Look, I am going to send you the prophet Elijah before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. So we skip ahead 400 years. We're in Luke chapter 1. We see that Zechariah is visited by Gabriel, the angel. And Gabriel tells Zechariah, your wife's going to have a son. And in Luke chapter 1, verse 17, the angel tells Zechariah this. He will go on before the Lord, in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the parents to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for a Lord. Pre prepared for the Lord. Does that sound familiar? It should. It was just what we read out of Malachi, pretty much. Zechariah says, um, hey, how can I know this? And what happens? He goes silent for, for nine months. The baby's born. Elizabeth is asked, what's the baby's name? He says, she says, name him John. They ask Zechariah, are you sure there's no relatives uh, named that? And he gets a writing tablet and says, his name is John. And it was at that point that Zechariah's tongue was loosed and he was able to speak. And that leads us to this Sunday's lesson text. I'm going to back up a verse to verse 67 and start the lesson there. It says, and his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying... And then verse 68 starts there. You know, Zechariah had to have been filled by the Holy Spirit because he spoke immediately without having talked in nine months. He didn't have to do any vocal exercises to warm up. And as miraculous as him going from speaking to not speaking was, as miraculous as that was, his being mute for nine months to immediately speaking just as miraculous. And as he began speaking, what were the first things he said? He began with adoration and praise for the Lord. He said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. He didn't say, Wow, I can talk now. He didn't say that. Also, we would think that the majority of, of this song of praise would be about his newborn son, the one that, that was promised that uh, an angel came and told him about. But it wasn't. The majority of this song of Zechariah is about the Messiah. So just a few points I want to talk about, about some of the terms used here. Um, it talks about the Messiah is going to come and redeem. What does redeem mean? It means to buy back. If you're as old as me, if you've got a Heinz steak sauce named after you or older, you probably remember 
uh, those green stamp stores. And I can remember going as a youth and um, my parents letting me have several books of green stamps and I was able to redeem those for a basketball. It was a red, white, and blue basketball. I think it was like the one that uh, that uh, Curly or Metal Arc Lemon would spin on their finger in the Har Harlem Globetrotters. But what was that place called? It was called a Green Stamp Redemption Store because the store bought back those green stamps in, in the form of merchandise. So the Messiah comes to buy us back, to make that relationship with us and God, uh, to make that right. Then it talks about a horn, a horn of salvation. Well, a horn signified strength and power. And so a horn of salvation meant a mighty salvation. And you notice here that Zechariah talks in the past tense. He says, he has come, he has raised up. But here, Jesus isn't even born yet. If you remember the, the, the age difference between John, or John the Baptist and Jesus is about six months. So Jesus is only about three months old in the womb. He's not even born yet. But even though he wasn't born, he was already here. Okay. So the Messiah was sent to fulfill that promise that was given to Abraham. Basically that all nations would be blessed through him. The same as that seed of the woman that was mentioned back in Genesis chapter 3. Then Zechariah's song of praise switches to his new son. There's a bunch about the Messiah. Then it switches down to his new son and said that he will be a prophet of the Most High. Now let's contrast that. Let's look back in chapter 1 verse 32 where Mary was told her son would be the son of the Most High. This new son, John, he's going to be a prophet of the Most High. So that shows the place that John would take, uh, even though this is a miraculous birth, a miraculous conception uh, birth by uh, of John. Uh, he, and he's anointed. He's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit from, from uh, being in the womb. He's still going to be subservient to Jesus. John the Baptist later, he, he says, basically says this. He says, I'm actually unworthy to even t untie the sandals of Jesus. That's found over in John chapter 1, verse 27. Zechariah goes on to say, you will go on to prepare the way for the Lord. We get down to verse 78, and we see that this is a dawning of a new day. The Messiah will bring light into the darkness. We can compare that to John chapter 1, verse 5, that says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not un understand or did not comprehend it. We can refer back to Isaiah 9-2 where the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, a, a prophecy about the Messiah. So while there are many passages we could turn to about, um, about answering that question, why did Jesus come? This is an unusual one, but through Zechariah's prophecy, through the Holy Spirit, the reason for the Messiah's coming is clear. It's to save us from our sin, to restore that relationship with, with us and God, to offer that forgiveness. Something we might want to prepare for that somebody may ask is, was John the Baptist actually Elijah? Okay, because he was asked, and I'm going to have some scripture references underneath here that will um, show you what I'm talking about here. But John the Baptist was asked, you know, people came up to see him and they asked you know, are you the Messiah? No, I'm not. Are you Elijah? And he said, no, I'm not. But we get later, we see Jesus uh, talking about John and saying that it was promised that Elijah would come and that, uh, and, and he, he goes on and explains, and that was John the Baptist. So was he or was he not Elijah? Well, here's the thing. Was he really Elijah? Well, no, he was not really Elijah. Remember, Elijah came, uh, Moses uh, Elijah, Jesus, Mount Transfiguration, and uh, Peter said, hey, we need to build three tabernacles here for you guys. And um, so Elijah was there, and he was recognized as Elijah. It wasn't John the Baptist. Uh, th of course, the, the Transfiguration happened after John was beheaded. So it wasn't like Peter looked and said, oh, that's John the Baptist. No, <laughs> that's not it. Okay, so he came in the spirit. He came in the spirit and power of Elijah. It wasn't a reincarnation. Um, it wasn't Elijah brought back from the dead. It was he was in the spirit. He was in the power of Elijah. So you might want to be prepared for that question. Somebody may bring that up. And if they don't, you might bring it up yourself and explain that because it may be in somebody's mind that they've heard 
he was or he wasn't, they're not sure. So sometimes, you know, in your class, there's a lot of questions that don't get asked. Uh, a lot of people just have that natural shyness. They're afraid that, um, you know, they might look religiously ignorant. And, you know, we don't want to do that on Sunday morning in Sunday school, do we? And so sometimes it's good to just address those questions up front and uh, alleviate some of those thoughts, some of those questions that people have in their mind. All right, don't forget to pray for your class and stay inside where it's cool if you can. Thanks, guys.